Hi hey everybody, it's Mark again, and uh, as promised, we're going to do part two of repairing a George Cool Railroad Cuckoo Clock, and I show you um, me putting the movement in the case, uh, putting bellows in the case, cleaning the case, um, show you the movement on the stand to make sure that the minute hand rotates because if, uh, if you don't do that and if your uh, gear that I call it with the minute wheel with minute pinion. Other people call it something else. I'm using the Cuckoo Repair Guide book. That's where I get my names from. But but the um, the names are from the regular 25 and 34 movements, but it's the same wheel. Um, but in the count wheel system, that wheel comes off the main um, gear that provides power. And if that wheel hole is too big, it will just sit there and spin. The clock will tick all day long, but the hands will never turn. And I have a video on a Herbert Her movement that I figured that out on. But uh, you always want to make sure that your hands turn. If the compression washer under this minute wheel with minute pinion is too tight, your hands might not turn. If the wheel is, uh, the compression washer is too loose, your hands will drop. As they are turning, um, they might try to go up and they drop, or they might be coming off the 12, going to the 6, and they get to a certain point, and then they just drop. And so um, that's why you want to test your hand to make sure it's working properly. But anyway, uh, the bellows were not original to the clock. They didn't have the uh, wires, uh, the lift, um, bellow lift wires, and so I had to um, come up with some. And so uh, I got the clock ticking away right now. Um, but anyway, grab something to drink, grab something to eat, grab a cigarette if you choose to do so, and uh, let's learn things, because that's what this is all about. That's why the title is called uh, Cuckoo Clock Repair for Beginners. As you can see, I get it going. It's all working as designed. The low note lift lever was up there with the uh, with the gong so I had to take this nut and this nut off separate the plates take the strike great wheel out away from the second wheel and turn it to the right like one tooth and then put it all back in that way the low note lift lever drops into its position where it needs to be. So uh, now it's time to oil the movement, put the um, account wheel on, and again, I'm gonna put a chain on this to see if it's going to run um, be before I do anything else. Because, uh, as you can see, we, we, because we cleaned the movement, 
we now have more wear at the escapement wheel on this side it's escapement wheel only and on this side escapement wheel before it seemed like uh, we had yeah there it goes we have a uh, um, bushing wear on the second wheel here and here so we might need to put pivots in the second wheel and the escapement wheel on the time side. But I'm not going to do anything until after I um, oil it and put, put some chains and test it out. It didn't come with the original pendulum. But as you can see, it's on my movement stand. It's ticking away. It's pretty close to being in beat. Not quite. But I'm going to let it run for a couple hours and see what happens. These are the bellows that came with it. There's no hardware with the bellow. No lift wires. Nothing like that. So I have to find something to put with it this bellow works great being a high note lift bellow but this bellow it doesn't sound of anything the the paper is good but I think that the reed, which is this little piece of board right here, is not in the right position. I'm not for sure. So I'm going to break the bellow topper off and, and see if I can figure out what is wrong with the bellow itself. And... If I break the bellow, I've got plenty of other bellows. So it's been running for a couple of hours now, so uh, I could take this uh, movement off the stand and um, put it back into the case. So, yes... For those people who say you have to have bushings, you don't necessarily have to have bushings. It all depends on the clock itself. The clock is not running now because the pendulum is hitting the weight because the way I have it, I pulled the weight up too far. So, um, escapement wheel and the second wheel both had um, bushing wear but the clock ran for two plus hours so um, I'm going to put it back in the case and it will continue to run how long it will run the full 30 hours. How long will it run? Um, whether it be a week, uh, a year, two years, nobody can answer that. Now that we got the movement ticking away, I need to work on the case. I think for this, uh, case I'm going to use some Howard or beaten wax. Uh, if you ask my opinion, they all work about the same. 
it's just what kind of time do you want to spend on it? Uh, old English oil to me is the easiest to apply and that's what I've been using for years but other people use new life furniture mask people use Howard or beaten wax I bought some ads seen on TV Amish uh, wood milk again they all work about the same in my opinion but it just depends on how much time you want to spend on it. Uh, with the waxes, it's like polishing a car. Wax on, wax off. With the old English oil, you just rub it on and leave it alone. But I bought this Howard beat in wax, so I might as well use it. I just like the new light furniture mask. I go from different things all the time. Uh, my friend uh, that I was visiting, he loves new light furniture mask. And he puts it on and he doesn't really follow the instructions. The instruction says, let it dry for like five minutes or something like that, and then wipe it off. He basically puts it on and then wipes it off almost immediately. And he does a great job, but he also takes all this trim off when he works on his clocks. Well, I kind of scared to take all that trim off. So I'm not going to. So anyway, I'm going to clean this clock up and uh, we'll get back to you. As you can see, the, uh, I got the case all cleaned up. The stain, well, sorry, the uh, treatment will continue to dry. And then tomorrow, I will take a paintbrush to all the wet spot, wet looking spots and finish um, smearing the stuff in to the case and that's what my friend does when he um, treats his cases and like I said he does a really good job but he spends a lot more time on them than I do but I think it looks a lot better. What do y'all think? Now the topper we said was not original to the clock, but looks okay. However, this topper is painted gold. So I have to clean that up. And then restain the topper or whatever. So I think I'm going to take my uh, Dremel with wire brush to this topper. So um, I'll get back to you. And first of all, this brush was not designed for this Dremel. It's designed, I bought it at Walmart, 
it's designed for a drill and so that's why when I'm using this it will get out of hand following the grain of the wood Following the grain on the wood, it comes off fairly easily. Why they would paint it gold, I have no idea. But I'm going to continue trying to clean this up and we'll get back. My Jeremo is getting a little bit warm, probably because I'm using the wrong tool for it. But I pretty well got this side done. If I wipe it down, you'll see the difference. Natural wood looks a lot better than paint, if you ask me. Uh, this cloth is saturated with that Howard bead and wax. And new life furniture mask and probably old English oil also. There's a couple of spots of gold that I didn't get. But I think that looks a whole lot better than that. What do you think? But anyway, I'm going to continue <clears throat> with this cleaning it off after my Dremel cools off. I hope you all are enjoying this video set. I hope that you're learning things. You know, because I was asked by a friend of mine to do this cuckoo clock repair for beginner set. And we talked about it, and I agreed with what he said. You know, I, I had a bunch of videos already on cuckoo clock repair. And, and uh, I wanted to pass my knowledge on, or my experience. Your knowledge is gained through experience. And I have a lot of experience in a short period of time on repairing cuckoo clocks. And I seem to be the person that people tend to ask. Not only in my groups, but in other people's groups on Facebook. I don't I'm not members of a bunch of groups. I don't have time. And so, but I will answer questions if people ask me, which is what I do. Anyway, uh, again, I think this looks a lot better than this. Well, here it is. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than what it was. You can still see a little bit of yellow in it where my wire brush couldn't get to. But uh, 
again, it's a lot better than what it was with that paint on there. Why they would want to paint a beautiful piece of wood like this, I have no idea. I got to do some bellow repair uh, to the one bellow that wasn't working properly. I got the bellow repaired. Um, a lot of it was the hole that this piece of wood has underneath of it. Again, this piece of wood right here is what is called the reed. And there's a small slot. Maybe you could see it. There's a small slot right here. It's a piece, it's clearance. That's what causes the noise. And it was plugged up with something. So I took my knife to it and cleared it. But whoever made this bellow didn't fold it properly. And that's what happens when you don't fold the bellow properly. It kind of explodes on you. So, um, when you make your bellows, you want to push in the ends and push in this very end so you have an X. And so I'm going to clamp this and hopefully take away the memory. See this bellow. Let me cover up the holes. This bellow, when op operated properly, doesn't explode on you. The material doesn't come like you're blowing up a balloon. It's working properly. And that's because it was folded properly. But with this bellow, it explodes. It wasn't folded properly. And so I'm going to clamp this and leave it overnight. And hopefully it will change itself. Uh, the Tyvex paper will get a memory in it. And so clamping this and overnight, hopefully, will change that memory to what it needs to be. One of the next steps we have to do is because this clock didn't come with a, a set of hands, it did come with this uh, celluloid, I believe it's celluloid, it might be bone, I think it's celluloid, um, hour hand, but it didn't come with a minute hand, as we have to choose a set of hands. Now, I've got all kinds of hands, but this is a square whole minute hand, and I've got hands that don't have any holes in them. I got round whole hands, and then I have many hand, square hole hands, but as you can see, it's not the same. So now I'm going to have to uh, um, 
take a file and make that square hole bigger so it fits on here. Uh, so that's what I'm doing next. Now I put the uh, minute pipe up on the hand and I traced around it so I can uh, I'm actually going to take my Dremel and cut that out but you want to make sure that the square hole the it's that you keep it in symmetrical like if you were to trace around this, you want to make sure that the that it's going to be a square hole the way it started when you're done, because it all has to do with timing your clock when the clock cuckoos, and after I get the mini hand. Uh, sort it out. We'll explain that more. I didn't do a very good job with uh, the mini hand, but it when I put it on, it points to the right. Okay, but I got plenty of these mini hands, but I don't know if you could see this or not. When you line the square up to where it's parallel to the ground, the minute hand points to the right. So I don't think they punch these right to start with. So I'm going to redo my minute hand and try to trace it better. So we'll get back. Okay, I made a better hand. So what we have to do now is we have to put all this together. Um, we have to put this on. And what we want to do is to see exactly when this wire falls because when that wire falls is when the clock actually cuckoos and as you can see it's cuckooing before the hand is at the six o'clock or the 12 o'clock position but you can't really tell because it's dropping like that. And that's what this is for. And that's what that compression spring is for. So the compression spring goes on first. And there's a square that it fits on. And then this minute wheel with minute pinion, as I call it. And then there's... I'm not going to put the other stuff on, but this hour pipe would go on. And then a washer... And a pen that goes in that hole, but I just want this on just so I could see where that wire is dropping. And it's dropping about five minutes till the hour. And about 25 minutes past the hour. So, I'm going to have to adjust that, that wire so it drops exactly 
at the 12 and at the 1. And so that is just, uh, it's kind of a, you bend it one way kind of deal and see if it helps. And if it don't help, you bend it the other way. So right now, I'm going to bend it outwards. My little leg is falling off. These things work great, but... They're kind of... So we bend it outwards so it's more of a B versus a C. So now I'm going to put it back on and see where that wire drops. I didn't put it on all the way because it's not catching the wire. Or if I put it on all the way, it's it's not catching. I think. Maybe I bent it too much. Um, I'm going to see what's going on here. The uh, the wire has is not catching those tabs at all, and so I have to bend it up some. I think in the process of bending that wire, that I bent it down. So now it's bent, so it catches it. So now I have to figure out where it's, it's still, uh, dropping about five minutes till the hour. So, uh, I'm going to bend it some more. I'm trying to experiment to see what I need to do. I'm going to bend it up and see what happens. See, now it's, it's, it's dropping about 10 minutes past the hour, uh, before the hour. So I think I bent it the wrong way. Now we're closer. I'm going to put this wheel back on to slow it down. A 
watch the wire. It's about 28 minutes um, past the hour. Watch the wire. And about two minutes till the hour. So I need to bend it down some more. Just a little bit. And then test it again. That's very close. About a minute till the hour. But I have to look at these pens. And that's why I'm taking this piece off here to look at the pens. I think if I close this V in, just a little bit, I think that will give us our, what we want. Or maybe not, maybe I went the wrong way. I went the wrong way. I need to open the V some. Like I said, it's a trial and error thing. You just got to figure it out for yourself. And if you, um, if you, if you bend things the wrong way, like right now, it, the wire is catching on that V. That's because This wire isn't dropping because it's hitting the main gear. So you have to you have to bend it so it doesn't hit the main gear. So I think I have it about right. So now I'm going to put this lever back on and see what happens. Now I bent the wire too much because now it's not catching those tabs at all. I bent it in too much. I don't know. If, here, right here, you should be able to see it. I bent, I bent the wires in too much so it's not catching the tabs at all. So I got to bring it out some. Like I said, it's just a, a trial and error thing. So I'm going to continue bending these wires because y'all don't need to see. Actually, I think I have it about where I want it. That looks about the six o'clock position. 
Watch the wire. Ah, shoot. Sorry. Six o'clock position. Watch the wire. About the 12 o'clock position are pretty dang close. So anyway, our next tip is to um, is to put the hour pipe on. Find a washer, because it didn't have a washer, so find a washer so it doesn't, so the hour pipe doesn't come off. Put the pin in that hole. There's a hole right here on this posting. And then put the mini hand back on. Put the weight on. And see if that minute hand is going to move. And you want to do that where it starts at the 12 o'clock position or 1 o'clock. Anyway, a full 360 degrees plus a couple minutes. Because... If you remember with the Herbert Herr movement that I worked on, this hole was worn out on a movement and uh, no matter how much pressure I put on this wheel here, the, the, um, the hands would not move. So I want to make sure that the hands are going to move. So I'm going to find a washer and that's what we're doing next. So I have the movement back in my test stand and I drew some marks on these wheels. I don't have the pendulum on. And so I should be able to see real quickly whether or not the minute hand is rotating or not. Which it is. Because it started off at the 12. And my blue marks are moving also. But, like I said, you want to do this for at least one pull rotation plus. And if the minute hand wasn't moving, A, your compression washer is too tight, or B, the, um, the wheel here, Um, hole is too big and is slipping on that um, the great wheel if you don't believe me watch the Herbert Herr uh, folders that I have and I have a video where I'm doing the same thing and the blue dots never move And so, um, it happens. Now the uh, weight is, uh, has been doing its thing for at least an hour as I've been answering questions on Facebook. Uh, so now it's time to uh, uh, take this off the stand because the hand is turning 
as it should. So now it's time to put this movement back into the case. Because I'm satisfied that everything is working properly. And after you get a couple of screws in the movement, you can go ahead and connect the bird to its door. The uh, dial seems to have came loose, so I need to uh, hammer those nails back down. I have a, a punch to do that with. I misplaced my uh, my hammer, but it's too heavy anyway. I don't want to use a bunch of force. Hammering these nails in. This dial might be warped. I have to take this dial out and investigate further. And you also want to make sure that the uh, the hour pipe and minute arbor is not touching the wood portion of the dial. So I'm loosening the screws. To uh, move the movement some. And then tightening those screws back down. My bit <laughs> keeps coming out of my screwdriver. Now it cleared the hole and I can put the other two screws in.
the cuckoo bird is tilting up in the air. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't like it. There's no adjustments other than bending his legs. The, uh, if you remember, he sits on a log. That screw that tightens that log goes through a hole in the metal shaft. So you can't move it to the left or to the right. And so, uh... When he comes out, he's sticking up in the air, and I don't like that. So I'm probably going to have to bend his legs to get him to, to be parallel with the ground. So, the next step is to put bellows in and to put the count wheel on, but I'm going to have to adjust the cuckoo bird because I don't like the way he's sitting. And I'm going to have to uh, make bellow um wires to attach to the high note and low note lever because they didn't come with them so whenever i get that done we'll get back with you so i have both bellows in and doing a function test on the bellows by hitting the uh opening up the door here on the side and hitting that trip wire As long as I keep pressing on that trip wire, it'll keep on uh, cuckooing. I don't have the count wheel in. That's next. And I am going to have to um, do something with the bird because it's sticking on the door. In the doorway. The, uh, the log is sticking. I'm trying to put the door back on now. It came off so I could do the function test. But it's time to put the count wheel on now. Let's talk about this count wheel. Get all my stuff out of the way so we can talk. Most 
cuckoo clocks and I'm going to say most only will cuckoo on both the hour and half hour. I just was shown a clock today that is a cuckoo clock. It only cuckoos on the hour. There's only one pen on the minute tube that I showed you earlier that goes on to the the uh, fixed post um, typically there's two pens on a cuckoo on an antique cuckoo quail clock it only cuckoos on the hour um, newer clocks, and I say newer, they're a lot older than me. They were made in, let's say, the 40s and 50s, like the Herbert Herb that I have, uh, one that I sold. It cuckoos on both the hour and half hour. But most cuckoo quail clocks, antique cuckoo quail clocks, only cuckoo on the hour. If you look at these slots, there's enough space to cuckoo on both the hour and the half hour. Now, when you get to this particular section right here, this is the 12 o'clock to 1.30 section, this space right here. This section right here is the 12 o'clock section. When it's done cooking 12 o'clock, it goes right next to this section. The next time it cuckoos on the half hour, it goes right here, 1230. Next time it cuckoos, 1 o'clock right here on the hour. Next time it cuckoos, right here, one thirty. This section right here is the 2 o'clock section. One, two, drop. 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and we're back to 12 o'clock. I'm going to do that one more time. 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Sorry, I, I screwed up. I'm trying to do it so you guys, so you see that I'm hitting everything. You should be able to see everything from here. 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 10, 11, and we're back to 12. Like I said, the 1 o'clock section is right in this great big space. So at the, at the end of it, cuckooing 12, it drops. Then on the half hour, it drops in this big space. Then on the 1 o'clock, it drops in this big space. 1.30, it drops in this big space. And then this is the 2 o'clock. And then when it's done with the 2 o'clock, it drops in here. And then on the 2.30, it drops in here. Then this is the 3 o'clock space. So when I set these things up, I want it closest to one of these sections as possible. Now you should be able to see that from here. So I'm going to drop this count wheel into this uh, gear here.
and uh, and then I want this lever right here closest to one of those sections to the left as possible and that piece that drops in there that count wheel it needs to be parallel with the count wheel I guess you would call it in other words you don't want it curved you don't want it bent so it's going from left to right you want it to to drop in there kind of straight down and I'm going to see if I can trip it and it functioned properly now that was 1230 that's one o'clock 130 I might have <coughs> messed up this should be two o'clock here Two thirty, one, two, two, three, three o'clock. My chain's getting all tangled up here. This is um, it was three o'clock. So this is three thirty, four o'clock. So I'm going to um, go all the way around and make sure they're functioning properly. Just like on a, on a uh, Regula or Herbert Her or any other movement, you want to do from 12 o'clock all the way back to 12 o'clock because uh, there might be something wrong with one of these spaces. It might have a burr on it somewhere. There's one case where somebody was having a problem and come to find out one of these spaces had a burr on it and that burr was causing it to skip and not stop when it's supposed to. Also want you to. Uh, I wish I had better light. I'm. I'm truly sorry. I want you to look at the fan, the governor fan. You should be able to see it right here. When it's done cuckooing, it should not continue to spin. It should maybe turn a quarter of a turn or a half a turn. Try to get to it so you can see it. If I turn it right here, you should be able to see that band in that area. Now watch the the governor band again. It's down in there. And as you can see, it doesn't continue to spin. If 
it continues to spin, it's too loose. Your clock is cuckooing too fast, too funny, whatever the case might be. So, uh, the next step is for me to hang this thing on a stand and watch it tick away and make sure it does tick away for 24 hours. And I have to put the hands on it. And like I said, I, I, I have to fix the bird it, it so it goes back into the door. If the door opens too much, he's not going to be able to go back into the door. He does that way, but when this thing's standing up, you see, and it's because that log is catching up on the, uh, up on the door frame. I haven't figured out how to adjust that yet. What I can do is um, put a wire. The Popo Cuckoo Clocks have a brace. That way the the clock and the bird can't go into that doorway. And so what I can do is put a brace on that log wire somehow so uh, it can't go past that doorway. I forgot to put a, a bird lift wire on this bellow. I have this roll of fencing wire. It's kind of, it bends, but it shouldn't bend that easily. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to heat this up with my propane torch to a cherry red, and I'm going to quench it in water really fast. That will make this piece of wire harder, and I'm going to do that a couple of times. Now, I, I heat treated it. It's still bendable, but it's not as bendable as this stuff. And so that way I can uh, bend it and it can lift the cuckoo without continuing to bend. Here I am with the file rounding out the hour hand and then testing it because, you know, the the hour hand also didn't have the right hole in it. I'm almost where it needs to be. So you just grab a file and start rounding it out. And in this case, it's a tapered file of some sort. I don't know what the name of the file is. And now the hour hand fits. So now I have to um, 
put the rest of the clock on. The rest of the pans on, should I say. Um, I could have used a minute, a round hole pan in this case because that is what that piece right there is for. It screws down on the square hole, uh, square arbor, and then you put a uh, round hand on, but I have a square hole hand, so that's what I'm going to use. And then the final nut, and I don't know whether I got this in the uh, um, hour or the half hour section. I got it in the hour section. So now I need to turn this hand around and put it in the half hour section. And we did the um, hand test with the movement out of the uh, case. If you remember that but it doesn't guarantee that it's going to go off exactly where it should because the um, we don't know whether or not the case is exactly where it needs to the movement is exactly where it needs to be is what I meant to say I'm trying to back that that uh, piece off that I told you I could put the uh, around hole on minute hand on that way my minute hand is tighter but I don't think I'm going to be able to let's see what happens Something is in a bind. So now I have to fix my hands again. Well, I'm not going to fix my hands. Because this is what this door is for. You uh, open up this door. You know, so it was just a half hour. And you trip this lever inside. So now it's the hour. And that's 11 o'clock. I know it's 11 o'clock position because of what we talked about earlier. So the, uh, the hand is in a pretty good spot. If you can see that. So now it's time to put it in my stand. But here I have it in my stand, and 
that's where I'm gonna leave it for the next 24 hours to make sure everything is uh, right and uh, I hope y'all like this video one more time the door comes open early and it's because the wire that trips the cuckoo bird is bent too close to the wire and so if you don't want the door to come open early you bend the wire away the trip wire away from the wire that makes the bird come out It's bouncing, and it's because the lever that comes out is too close to the um, to the count well. I hope y'all like this video. I'm going to uh, go ahead and stop it. I showed you pretty well everything that I think I needed to, sh to show you. And so, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, post this uh, video to YouTube. So anyway, I hope you liked uh, part two of this uh, um, video presentation. I hope you learned things. Um, you know, some people say, well, he never shows us a clock up and running. You know, I, I like testing clocks for a while before... Uh, before um, uh, um, I'm done with them. And so um, sometimes things happen. Even after I, I post these videos, sometimes things happen. But the next video I might talk about something that has happened. But um, the clock is up and running. It is ticking away. Um, and it wasn't when we started. The bellows do work. So I, anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope you learned things. Uh, stick around for the next video. I have something in mind. But, you know, uh, something else might happen. And I might post a different video. But uh, anyway, may God bless each and every one of you.